Hey yo, this is a quick demo and review of the Reliable Dream Stitcher 787 Serger. If you're not familiar with sergers, stick around and you might learn something. So when you buy a serger new, they tend to come threaded with a test scrap fabric under the foot. So you can see that it was tested and calibrated at the factory, which is nice when it comes to threading it for your first projects, which I'll explain in a minute. Most sergers have this little door here that gives you access to the looper threads. This machine uses the door as a storage compartment as well, so all the little cleaning tools and spare needles and such are stashed right here, which I think is a cool idea. So here's a tip for beginners and pros alike. Always consult the manual for a new machine. If you buy a used machine that didn't come with a manual, try to find it online. Why? Because all machines are different. I've had five sergers and five sewing machines, and there's something different about every single one. Different bobbin orientation, different threading direction, or in the case of this serger, there's a different order of threading the machine. And threading is the part most people dread most when it comes to sergers, but it's really not that hard. It's like following a recipe when you're cooking. Do one step at a time and you'll be fine. And then once you've done it a few times, there's usually a little cheat sheet diagram on the machine like this. So I'm going to get my thread cone set up, and people ask sometimes about serger thread. They want to know if they have to buy the big cones. I don't know if it's because they're shying away from the fact that the serger cones tend to be like 7 bucks a pop, but believe me, it's way cheaper to use serger thread than to try to use a standard spool of sewing machine thread. You'll burn through one of those little spools way too fast. Before I start threading, I want to get rid of the test scrap, so I'm just going to advance the wheel by hand to get it out of the way. Here at the top is a big knot of the test threads, and I'm going to cut the knot off so I can get at each thread individually. So this is the cheater method to threading a serger. You don't have to do it this way. You can clear out all the threads and start from scratch, but the cheater method takes some of the pressure off, especially if you're still a little wary of threading your serger. And it works the same for all machines. Take the live end of the thread, which is the thread that's already threaded through the machine, and tie it to the end of your new spool. Now if you are threading this machine from scratch, it would be very important that you do so in the order dictated by the manual. When you're using the cheater method where you tie new threads onto the old threads, it's less important. But I'm going to do this in the order for this machine anyway, just in case you're wondering why I'm starting at one side and not the other. These numbered dials here are the tension control discs. I'm going to gently pull the thread through the tension disc until I see my knot come through. There it is. Repeat for the other looper, tying the new spool onto the live thread. Make sure you get good tight knots on these. Once they're tied on nice and tight, you pull the threads all the way through the machine until you get to the knots and bam, you've got freshly threaded loopers. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Once you're finished with the loopers, we can move over to the needles. You can use the same technique for the needles where you're tying on the new thread to the old thread, except the knots generally aren't going to make it through the needle eyes. So you'd have to advance the new thread just until you get to the eye of the needle. Then you have to cut the knot and thread the new thread through the needle by hand. Instead, I usually just do the needles from scratch because honestly, threading the needles is the hard part. I cut the old thread out and I thread the new spools step by step as dictated by the manual. Unlike the loopers, most needles on sergers are probably threaded about the same way. There's probably a thread guide at the very top of the machine, like so. The tension discs are usually marked with a neutral position. In this case, it's number four setting. When you're threading, or at least when I'm threading, the tension discs inevitably get knocked out of place. So I'll just set that back to four. Thread through the tension disc. Sometimes it's hard to get it all the way in, so I always grab the thread like I'm going to floss my teeth and really work it in there. Under the tension disc, there's probably another thread guide, and then the thread diverts over toward the needle. Another thread guide here with a spot for the left needle and a spot for the right needle. Just above the needle itself, on the shaft, there's a loop for the left thread and a loop for the right. Now the tricky part. There's just something about threading needles on a frickin' serger that takes way longer than it should. It helps immensely if you have one of these here needle threaders. And even then you'll see, it takes me forever. But it would take forever in a day if I didn't have one of these little guys on hand at all times. If you're not familiar with needle threaders, you've probably seen them. There's a more disposable type that kind of looks like a little foil coin with a loop of wire on it. 
This one is really exactly the same. It's just blue plastic instead of foil. Push the wire loop through the eye of the needle from the back of the machine. This is one of the trickiest parts because there's not a lot of room to maneuver around the needle of a serger. You basically have to hug your machine while you do this. Or you can try doing it left-handed for the sake of a video, which is 10 times harder when you're not left-handed. Once the loop of wire is through the needle eye, put the end of the thread through the wire loop, which proves to be, in this case, almost as hard as threading the frickin' needle itself. But once you get the thread in the wire loop, you pull the wire loop back through the needle, and voila, you've threaded that little bastard. You will eventually probably have to thread the loopers from scratch. Just follow the instructions and take it step by step, and you'll be fine. One of the things I really like about this machine is that it has this extra opening here that swings open. None of my other sergers have that, and it makes it so, so, so much easier to thread the loopers. We're ready to take it for a spin on some test fabric. Look at that baby surge. You might not be able to tell so much from the video because the table I'm using right now for this demo is not my usual sewing table. It's a little wonky and shaky. But this machine is really smooth, probably because it appears to be mostly metal. It has more metal than any of my other sergers, which means it's heavier and sturdier, and that makes for a much smoother sewing experience. For the inexpensiveness, I'm actually really, really impressed with the weight of this machine. The cheaper sergers with more plastic parts have a tendency to kind of dance all over the table while you sew, and it can be pretty annoying. Last but not least, I will demonstrate how to tuck your thread tails. Get thee a big fat yarn needle, which you might be familiar with if you're a knitter, or a dull-ended upholstery needle. Thread the needle back up through the stitches. If it's a seam, I like to try to get the needle between the two layers of fabric. Leave the eye of the needle exposed so you can thread the tail through it, and then you just slide the needle through the stitching. Pull the thread tail through with it, and then when you get it all the way through, you just trim the remaining tail, and that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and for more tips, tricks, and kick-ass sewing patterns, visit whatthecraft.com.